All right, let's get some more on what's going on in the US and more globally at the moment. That US unemployment report will be the spotlight this week. And uh, Peter Maguire joining us from XM. Pete, a very good Monday morning to you. All right, so uh, just casting your eye on the states there, um, of course, we are expecting that to the key non-farm payrolls figure at the end of this week. But what else are we seeing out of the states at the moment? We had a raft of data on Friday, more to come this week. We are seeing the resilience of the US consumer at this point. Absolutely, and good morning, Andrew. I tell you what, it was just an enormous week last week as far as overall sentiment and positiveness. And considering that it was in a lot of ways a soft Friday, but the markets weren't soft, NASDAQ was up three and a third percent, just considering it's a long weekend, Memorial Day today. So, and it's gonna be a short week. So we really start to enter that summer driving season, summer holiday season of what the US is famous for. And the overall theme, yeah, I'm worried about the retail uh, spending. I'm worried about the consumer, but the overall market has been very, very strongly bid up in the last couple of days. And that's a good sign for Asia and what we'll see in Europe as well. We're also starting to see evidence that a lot of uh, companies are now considering at least freezing um, hiring, if not actually laying off some workers. Absolutely. That's, uh, that'll be a problem that I think we'll face. We've got 85% of people are saying in the States that there will be a recession within 12 months. So let's see if that materialises. And the, uh, as far as Wall Street's concerned and the big behemoths, yeah, there is a certainly a freeze on and slow down of hiring and all of those impacts are going to be tough. But unemployment numbers are very low. I'm looking forward to seeing what the numbers will be this Friday. I'm not here to speculate on them because you can be out by hundreds of thousands. But uh, it's going to be an interesting week, Andrew. We might have a nice week here. I think it'll be overall positiveness. Uh, let's see what happens Friday. Oh, I, I like your attitude there, Pete. That's, uh, that's good news. Uh, how are we seeing this all play out on uh, FX markets at the moment? The, uh, the US dollar, that index uh, coming off a little Absolutely. Uh, off the back of that, that news that we've had. And the Aussie receiving a bit of a pop as well. Well, exactly. Aussie 71 and a half, Andrew, and the US dollar index 101.65, well off its 104.20, 104.40 sort of number that we were at a couple of weeks back. So the US dollars come under pressure, was exhausted to the upside, and there was, I think everything was baked in that was baked in, you know, as far as Jerome Powell's two rate rises in June and July, the 50 basis point each one, all of that good news was factored in. US dollar really went on a tear. And the Aussie, as far as currencies are concerned, they've been dynamic and had a nice little uptick there. Euro 107.5, yen's back at 127.16, off from 130. So there's been huge movements there and also the commodity sector on fire with crude just touching 120, Andrew. Pete, taking a look at Europe, uh, expectations the ECB will lift its interest rates in July. The question is by how much. Now, of course, we're going to get a, another reader this week on inflation, yeah. which is running hot. Absolutely running hot. We're, US, we're Europe-centric, our business, and we're very conscious as far as the consumer and what my workmates tell me as far as costs for things in Europe are just sky high. So all of those factors have got to be, I think, managed and interpreted. So we'll be interested to see as far as the reads concerned and how aggressive the ECB wants to be. Uh, Again, hard to speculate. We're, you know, four or six weeks from that decision. So I'm just here looking at it all, realising that you could see a little bit further move to the upside for the euro and uh, dynamic markets to trade, Andrew. Yep. And likewise, Canada's central bank lifting, looking to, to lift again. Yeah, they've been aggressive. They haven't sat on their hands. So that overall theme as far as Canadian dollar, you know, that 126, 127, 128, it's, uh, it, again, a very, very hotly traded market as far as across is concerned. Canadian dollar yen, Canadian dollar pound or Aussie dollar, that's, and against the US, of course. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of movement across the FX sector. Pete, let's turn to China. Um, interesting mm -hmm. to see where this is all going at the moment because uh, not really sure just as far as the lockdowns are concerned. They no. appear to be easing, yet uh, they're maintaining that, that COVID zero policy and uh, a lot of questions as to whether that is feasible going forward. Most would say no. 
Um, it is looking to be accommodative, accommodative as far as its policies are concerned to support the economy. What's your read of the China, Chinese economy right now? Well, if I look at um, a, a survey coming out from Bloomberg going back about a week and a half, Andrew, they were saying it could see a growth anywhere from 2% to 5.5%. So uh, as far as GDP, so that really gives me an, an indication. We know that the US beat China in the fourth quarter last calendar year. And Biden came out in January and said that as far as GDP growth and the overall softness across China, I think, will be uh, demonstrated in the in the reads. So, yeah, I'm not looking at great numbers coming from their big stimulus planned. And the overall theme is going to be, do they uh, wind it back as far as the lockdowns or is it still going to be the same situation over that uh, summer period? You would have thought it would be a little bit better in summer. Yeah, but are you sort of feeling as though perhaps, um, I mean, the, you know, we're just seeing, given us a, a, a command economy, they'll just do what it takes to, uh, to keep things uh, moving. Absolutely. They've spent $5 trillion to date, so there's no, I, I think they'll keep their hands firmly on the wheel. They don't want to see it back at 2%. They're very, very conscious of that. That's really a slap in the face. So, uh this is the great dilemma that they face, Andrew, of how much do they have to throw at this to get traction? And um, we just sit here and observe and uh, and look at, you know, the supply chains, logistics and everything else, the internal spending and the raw numbers that are, uh, you know, manifested from China.